All right. So good morning, everybody. October 14. The slaughterhouse of failure is not in our destiny. We shall persevere until we succeed. So today, Dan and I would like to make it a little uncomfortable for everybody. Because it's a come to come to the party. I don't want to say what it's a, it's a come to Jesus moment for you, for me, for Dan, for everybody. So Dan and I, today we're going to be talking about the difference between being about accountability and responsibility. So just as an example, Dan and I are responsible for bringing you food for thought every Friday. We're responsible to help to hopefully inspire you to action. However, you are accountable for your results. So our responsibility is one part. The accountability is for each one of us individually to actually take action and do something about it. So I have a question because, you know, we're looking at this and we're saying we should by now have had 100 people on this call. I know we do have about 100, except a lot of them because of time and Facebook and uh, whatever. I know we do have. But if this was your only source of income, would you be doing things more, differently? What would you do? So Dan and I have this accountability introspection that we have. Because apparently, we're not having as much success with transmitting the message as we would like to have or we believe. We don't really know. And one of the reasons is because with, there's no way that we can measure the lag measure with everybody. We don't know that. We can just transmit a message and then it's up to you to be accountable for you and your team and what you're doing. But we also need to have some kind of feedback to know if we're doing this. On a, scale of, on a scale of one to 10, how are we doing? And lip service is not an answer. Oh, you guys do a great job. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, you guys do great. That's not an answer. An answer is when you really feel that you're making progress. So that today the, the theme is difference between accountability and responsibility. Dan? Yeah, so this, you know, this really, this whole topic really came out of a conversation that Lawrence and I had last night at about 6.30, 6.30 or so. And we got talking about accountability and how they used to do things in the old days uh, when he first got started in the business and some of the things that he was held accountable for. And, you know, as we were having the conversation, you know, it kind of dawned on me, we had this epiphany, like, maybe this is what part of the, what we're missing on our teams. Are we holding the people accountable that we brought into this business? Are we being held accountable by the people that we brought into this business, right? And so if we're not holding each other accountable, there's a whole piece of this puzzle that we're really missing, right? Because, because when we don't hold each other accountable or we're not personally held accountable, you know, then our motivation seems to, seems to wane a little bit. And I think we need to start being a little bit tougher on those that we work with, right? You know, I think I... Uh, on our team call, I, I said that I called uh, a lot of my team members a couple of weeks ago and said, look, I'm looking for you guys to drive $1,000 in new sales this month. Minimum. Can you do that? And this is people that haven't done anything. And, you know, I said, I'm going to hold you accountable to this. We're going to talk about it at the end of the month. You know, why you didn't hit your goal? Why you, why you weren't able to do that? You know, and I got questions. Why are you doing this? Why, why do you want us to increase sales? Well, you, this is a business. This is your business. You should want to do it. I don't know why you're asking me. And the people that asked me, I would kind of really question their motivations and whether they're even interested in doing this business, right? They shouldn't be asking me why at all. And so there's, there's really, you know, we need to drive a culture of accountability. And there's four steps to do that. The first is, is define. We need to define the behavior and out or outcome that's needed, right? What is the task? What's the goal? What's the behavior? And why is that important? What does success look like? When does it need to get done? Right? So those are, so those are the four, three things that we really need to look at when we're defining. 
what accountability looks like in our culture. Number two, communicate. Uh, you need to communicate effectively what these goals are. You know, have a meeting with your uh, team members, send them an email, one-on-one -on -one conversation, right? And communicate those expectations and then have them communicate their expectations of you back. Number three is assess. Decide the consequences, positive or negative, when the expectation is or is not met, right? And that's that, the accountability piece. If you don't hold yourself accountable and I don't hold you accountable for what you say you're going to do, is there a positive or a negative consequence for that, right? And then number four is follow through. You know, this is arguably the most crucial and sometimes most difficult within this whole accountability model. And that is taking action to address positive or negative behavior or outcomes. Not taking action can create an absence, absence of accountability, right? So those are kind of the four steps to drive a, a culture of accountability, you know, and Lawrence and I, you know, we need some accountability on these calls. You know, are we bringing something of value to you? Are you actually taking what we're talking about and integrating it into your daily activities or your monthly activities or yearly activities? Are we teaching you anything? Are, you, are we learning anything from you about what we should be promoting on these calls? You know, so um, I just wanted to kind of talk about the accountability piece of this. And, and I, I'm guilty of this as anybody. I, you know, I look at everybody that is on my team, you know, we're, they're a volunteer army, right? And it's hard to motivate a volunteer army. And it's even harder to try and hold them accountable because they are volunteer. But I think that's a piece for me personally that I'm really missing on this whole thing. And from a leadership standpoint, which we all are, I think that's an important piece that we need to integrate into our teams. Lawrence? So I, I think, you know, you'd, I actually had wrote down here, but just before you said that exact thing, volunteer army. And I think we actually have, have the possibility of doing something. We invite people to join us in this business, but we invest our time and energy and experience to help everybody on the team, each individual person on the team. But at a certain time, if that result is not visible, if we feel we're just pushing a rope and we're not doing anything, there's nothing really, Dan, to stop us saying, you're fired. We can, we can actually say, look, you know, I, I've tried for so many months to, to help you do this thing. You don't get on the calls. You don't, you're not compliant. You, you're not uh, consistent, you're not disciplined. These are things that you can learn to do, not, I mean, to the people we're talking to, to our team members, our volunteer army. We're talking to the volunteer army now. You know, how many calls have you missed this month? Why? Oh, because because you have to take the trash out. Well, come on, man. You know, we've got to, we've got to be more, more, uh, I think, aggressive if we want some results. That's what a in a, in, a, in a corporate world, on a, on a W-2, the boss will threaten you with a, to get a result. In our case, obviously, we can't do that. We wouldn't do that anyway. But, but, but we need to find some way where we can help progress. progress. We can help each individual actually make, take massive action, actually get onto the onto the calls, actually do things, actually be accountable. Because the, the, the responsibility, yes, but, but the accountability of each individual as well, for himself and for his or her team, him, himself or herself, and for their team. And this is what it's about. We've got to be a bit more, I think, we've got to be more aggressive about this and say, look, we need to have some results within a certain period of time. Otherwise, we're wasting time. And I want to just point something out. We all, all, everybody on this call is a day older than yesterday, a year older than a year ago. I am 76. If I've got 10 more years in life, 
if I have, that's 120 months. It's nothing. It's 3,650 days. It's nothing. My time is extremely valuable. Your time is extremely valuable because nobody knows how long we're going to be here. But we have to really have some results. We really have to show results if we want to, to ourselves, to our teams. That's where we have the responsibility. And then we have the accountability of actually doing it, showing it, being it. That's what our accountability conversation yesterday evolved to. So it evolved into talking about what is the value of our time. And Vince Fran to put a, a, a nice little note in here in the chat, teach people to deserve your time, right? And, and the, the conversation kind of evolved into, you know, how much time do we have left here? Time is valuable. You know, Lawrence is 26 years older than me. That doesn't mean that he has more time. My time could be up tomorrow or the next day. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully I have tw at least 26 more years. But it evolved into, you know, Lawrence, your time in theory is more valuable than my time because you have less of it. Hopefully not, but you could. And so, you know, we need to teach people to value our time um, if they're not. You know, if we have a lot of people that we're just dragging along that are on our teams that aren't really being productive or taking action, you know, they're just sucking up our valuable time. How do we get them to be more, to take more action? How do we get them to um, be more productive? How do we get them to do more three-way calls? How do we get them to come out to the Utah uh, forum more often? How do we get them to get on these calls more often? How do we get them to get on the team calls more often? You know, and then how are we going to hold them accountable? You know, I've talked about some of the sports that I love on these calls. You know, one of them is wrestling, not the, not the fake dramatized wrestling, but high level college wrestling. And the reason for that is it's one-on-one. -on -one. There's two people on the mat and you, only you are accountable to yourself for your performance. Win or lose, you're the one who's responsible for winning or losing. You have nobody to blame but yourself. Um, then there's rock climbing. You know, I talk about climbing and climbing mountains. That's a, that's a pretty solitary sport as well. You know, only you are responsible for your for your performance and whether you succeed or whether you fail. The other is cycling, professional cycling, you know, Tour de France, Giro d'Italia, all of these big, big races, even though it's a team, it's eight people, they're working as one. And so each one of those eight people has to be accountable to the other seven people on the team. If they're not performing properly, if they make a mistake and get in a wreck and it causes them to lose time, you know, there's accountability for those things. And a lot of those wrecks are caused by mistakes and not paying attention to what they're doing, losing focus. And so if you look at the sports that I love, they're kind of all really about accountability. And I think we need to start holding our team members more accountable. And actually accountability is, <clears throat> is also where you don't want to let the other people down. That's why you give it your all. You've always got a little bit more to give. You must give a little bit more to give. And, and it's because you've got this feeling of, I can't let my team down. I can't, I, I don't want to let anybody down. And this is where it becomes really excellent when you've got like, you, you know, you're mentioning cycling. Yes, but there's a peloton there. They're, they're all they're the entire team of, of cyclists on a peloton. We've discussed it peloton before. <clears throat> the guy who takes the lead and so on and so on. And they switch it all the time. And that's because, because there's an instilled desire. And this is the difference. There's a desire to, to not let your team down. And the chain is as strong as the weakest link. And you don't want to be the weakest link ever. You want to be the strongest link. You want to be there for the team. You want to be there to help everybody. You want to be able to make it happen. And in this business, the satisfaction is immense when we, when, we, when we are able to go to Utah and bring people with us, when we're able to, to earn, earn a trip to one of these trips that, that the company has and you've got your team with you. That's a hell of a satisfaction. 
you know, at a certain moment, we can all afford to do whatever we want with our lives because we should, by some reason of time, be able to afford it. But it's so much better when we can, when we can feel that we've actually done something constructive, that we've helped people. And this is where Dan and I had a conversation yesterday, was how effective are we? Are we really effective? Are we doing anything? I mean, are we really helping everybody? Are we, are we, are we achieving some results that, that, we in, that we envision? We envision every one of you people, us people, our teams, your teams, we envisage that we should have the most knock your socks off group of people on the, on, in the entire company. Are we doing that? If not, why not? Why are we not doing it? We're accountable too. We're responsible and accountable. So are you. We need to know. And this is something that we've got to really drive home now. Look, the, 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 we're talking about us needing to be as leaders accountable to others. And we're talking about them needing to be accountable to us. But what we haven't talked about is the most important accountability of all, our accountability to ourselves. Yeah. Right? If we're not accountable to ourselves, why are we in this business? Hold yourself accountable for that. Why are you not seeing the success that you want to see in this business? Hold yourself accountable for that. You, by not uh, make, being accountable to yourself, how are you going to be accountable to other people? And how are they going to be accountable to you? So the first person that we need to be accountable to is ourselves. You know, this business, in theory, should be really easy, right? We only need to have six people. Yeah. You know, if you have six people and they're all doing $4,000 in volume a month, you can make a decent amount of money by doing that. It shouldn't be that hard. Turns out it's harder than, than you think it should be because it's hard finding people that want to hold themselves accountable and be held accountable. So we need to find those people and we may have some of those people on a team, but we're just not holding them accountable. There's no accountability. So how do we create that accountability? How do we communicate that? You know, what is the behavior that we're looking at? How effective is the current level of the consequences for not being accountable or not reaching your goals um, that you want to reach or you want your team to reach? And then finally, you know, what adjustments are you willing to make if you're not getting that accountability, right? Are you going to adjust what your what the behaviors are that you want or that you're trying to influence? Are you going to adjust how you're communicating that to your folks? Are you going to adjust adjust how you know what's that current level of consequence? You know, so it's you you need to you utilize the lead and lag measures that we talk about in integrating or implementing this in driving this culture of accountability, right? So it all comes full circle. You know, back to these lead and lag measures and discipline, focus, accountability. You know, the thing is, I, I always like that uh, that uh, saying, the man in the mirror, or the woman in the mirror, the person in the mirror. He's not, no longer man or woman, just the person in the mirror, whoever that is. Look at that person in the mirror and rate yourself. Would you hire yourself for what you did today? or what you did yesterday, or what you've done this week, would you hire you? On a rate of one to 10, are you mediocre? Did you, or not are you, you're not, nobody's mediocre, but did you have a mediocre result? Did you have a wingdinger wow result? What was that due to? Did you look at that? Did you think about it? Why did you succeed yesterday? And why are you sitting on the couch today contemplating your navel? Why? What's the difference? Why is it that one day we're knocking it off the, out of the park and the next day we're, we're kind of looking at the clouds? These are introspections we have to do. And this is where we've got to take accountability and we've got to actually take action, massive action. And the thing is, it's easy to lie to yourself. You know, you can say, oh, you, to yourself, you say, for example, my desk looks like Hurricane Larry hit it. It's a disaster. And I look at it every morning and I say, today I'm going to do it. I'm lying to myself. But if I now say it to publicly to everybody, 
I'm going to fix my desk and I clean the whole bloody office up. Now it's going to be embarrassing as hell if somebody says, show me your office. And I haven't done it. Oh my gosh, now it's embarrassing. That's going to be a motivation to, to, to actually start to do something. Go ahead. I want to hear from everybody else. I mean, we, yeah. we get on these calls and we do a lot of talking. And yeah, that's true. I want to hear from others whether or not you have a, a culture of accountability on your team. What are you doing that's working? What are you doing that's not working? Why, are you, why do you not have a culture of accountability? Is it out of fear for what those people on your team are, would say if you hold them accountable because it is a volunteer army? You know, why are you not doing that? And is there a way to do it so that you don't upset the apple cart? So let's let's turn it over. I want to hear from some of you guys. Didi's got a raised hand. See what she says. Hey, guys. So um, I hear you big time on this whole thing. And I do a lot of uh, like Women's Day Out health, health fairs here in Tucson. And so last March, I did one. I get all these gals that are all excited. They want to sign up and everything else. So I'm all excited. I'm going to have them sign up, but they don't do anything. So I'm doing another one tomorrow. And so what I changed up is they got to fill out an application. You know, I want to see if they actually really are a person that I want to work with. So what you guys are doing on Fridays helps me out a lot. Because I'm, I'm now getting, uh, now I'm getting harder in my old age and not as soft and just, you know, I don't want to work with just somebody. I want to make sure that they're, they're, they're going to get on the calls. They're going to do the training. They're going to listen to what I have to say, you know, and, 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 you know, we go back and forth what we're going to do. So back to, are you guys helping me out? Yes. So that's, you know, I'll just let you know how my application works out. Awesome. Thank no, you. That's you know, that kind of rolls into what Lawrence and I also said yesterday. You know, if you look at when you sign up as a distributor, there's you have to sign their policies. You have to take their little course. Right. And it's basically an agreement that says you're going to do these certain things. When you sign up and get the scanner and you, you sign the scanner agreement and submit that, it's an agreement. You're saying I'm going to do these certain things and I'm not going to do other things. Right. Why do we not have an agreement for our team when other people join our team, right? An accountability agreement. Yep. So Deb, Deb, you have your hand up. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, I mean, we're, we all through this business, we get peaks and valleys. So it's a really important reminder of calls like this. And you guys do an amazing job. These are one of the one, one of those calls where you wanna keep it and and uh, earmark some of them so you can give this call to a newbie so they can, so that they can listen to it. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Valerica, who isn't on the call, but she's on most of the calls, but she just came back from her first time in Provo and she's making all kinds of doctor's calls and making mm -hmm. appointments and people. She's really hit the, hit the ground running and she really enjoys and appreciates your calls. So keep up the good work. You guys are amazing. That's awesome. But when you have a person like that, when you have a new person like that, that's all that's really excited. How do you keep them excited? How do you, you know, that that's what we're talking about. Do we have a way to hold them accountable, to keep them excited and keep them continuing to, to take that excitement from the forum in Utah? And so that it doesn't fizzle out over the next month, right? Mm -hmm. Having conversations with them on a, on a, week, <laughs> a weekly or a monthly basis saying, okay, here's what I'm going to hold you accountable for. Why have you done it? Ha have you done it? Have you not done it? Why have you not done it? And do you have a plan in place so that the next goal is reached, right? So uh, I, th I think, you know, I, I don't think that I'm tough enough with my people. I mean, I don't think I need to be, you know, overbearing, but I think there needs to be some suggestions of what they need to do or goal set of what they need to do. And then constantly you know, on a weekly basis, a half an hour phone call to communicate, re-communicate what those goals are um, and define them and then communicate them to them. And then what are the consequences if you haven't reached it? And do you have a plan if you didn't reach your goal so that you reach your goal next week, right? And, and kind of um, talk to us about that. Have them think about it. Have them think about their business and what they're going to do to be successful and you're just kind of prodding them along to make sure that they're doing it and you're holding them accountable. 
And the, the accountable part on the weekly call, this is what our calls are about, are where the people will say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then at the end of the week, everybody's out there in that same call to say, well, what happened? Did you do it? That's where I say it's easy to lie to yourself, but it's embarrassing as hell to make some to say something and not do it. So, so those calls I think are very, very useful. Vince has got his hand up. Vince, um, I'll give you all some little pointers of what I do, um, and, I, and I'm and I'm listening to y'all. And I think, and I, we put out a goal to at the beginning of the year what we wanted to be by December. I put my goal out there to y'all, and I think I'm like 200 GSV away from Ruby right now. And I'm not saying that to impress you to impress upon you. We all, we all put that out there. And I think what, what Dan's saying is we're letting too much time go between uh, dealing with people. So me, I'm on my people's case every day. So when you say, hey, I'll check with you at the end of the month, you, you've already lost it. So if I was working with Dan, see who, whose goals are on your wall? Is it your goals or your people's goals? So my people see my board, it's their goals on my board. And so I show them that. So they know, hey, I'm serious about getting you where you need to get to. And I let them know, like for you, Lawrence, you know, each day is a gift from God. And what we do, it is our gift back. And so instead of letting so much time go by with the people, when I say I'm going to check with you on Friday, for, we set our goals for this week. Tuesday, I'm calling you, hey, did you do anything? Because a lot of time we already know they're not going to do nothing. And it, instead of letting so much time go by when you're, when you're coaching people, and I always talk about driving people into basic activity. And with that, don't let so much time go by. I mean, you need to be on them the next day. Remind them the next day. Hey, I want you today. I, I got a task for you, Dan. I want you to write down every hour what you do. And tomorrow, I'm, I want you to give me that list. And then I call you on it. And so instead of letting the week go by, I mean, just shorten the time so that you're, you're more. I mean, that's what they do in your work. They come by, you know, you got your, your, your hourly checks. You check out. You got to check back in after lunch. You got these, these, these things you have to do. And so instead of letting so much time go by, condense that time into shorter time frames. Compress it. So if I'm talking with you on Monday and you know I'm going to be expecting an expectation on Friday, Wednesday, I'm going to touch base with you just to see have you done anything versus wait till the end of the week. So I just say just compress the time frame and give them actions of accountability. Hey, Dan, I need you to go put two cards out in the market today and I'm going to check with you tomorrow. I just need you to go do two things today. Give them something they can do and then check up with them and follow up to see if they did that activity. There's That's a danger, it. though, of micromanaging. That when you've got a bigger organization and you've got, you start to look at being a micromanager, that is a pitfall that I have fallen into several times. When we're trying to make sure that this person is doing whatever they're supposed to do, then we micromanage and then yep. we start spinning. But wheels. if you don't do it by two weeks, I'm done with you. Oh, they're, they're fine. That's with it. So I, I can find out within a short period of time. If I give you my Jim Rohn CD, you don't listen to it. I already know you're not coachable. I'm right. probably going to give you 10 or 12 more days of my time, right? And after that, I'm going to be like, fine. Time limit. Perfect. I agree with that. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's one of the, that could be one of the good things about micromanaging is you, you kind of weed, weed those out who are going to be productive and are mindful of your time and from the people that aren't mindful of your time and that you're just pulling along, wasting your time. So and, and momentum breeds success. Uh, you know, a great thing to do is if, uh, the, Dan, you sell a scanner today, that needs to go out there. I mean, people chase success and, no, you know, a, a dog doesn't bark at a parked car. And so, like, the first thing we do when anyone on the team has success, it's like, oh, my God, Hector Mata did this today. Every, and I, boom, 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 boom. And I let people know stuff is happening. And so if people don't think anything's happening, they're going to be lackadaisical as well. But if it's like, hey, we did a thousand GSV out of a clinic yesterday, put that out there. That's what we did. Going back, we launched a clinic. We did a thousand GSV. You see, I'm in the clinic right now. And so, you know, put that success out there. Let people know things are happening because people will chase the success. But if they're just people have never set goals, they've never been accountable to themselves. But if they see success happening in the marketplace, if they hear that, so I mean, the first thing you do when you when you have something successful happen is you put it out to the team and not in an egotistical manner, but to let them know, hey, this ball is moving. Um, I'm, my buddy Hector, dude, we're, we're moving it. We're going here. And he's like, man, I got to do something now. I got to do something now. And so just remember, whenever you have success, let that success, you know, put those back to the team because then they're, they're going to want to start chasing you because they're going to realize like, man, I'm about to miss out. And people only do things for two reasons, benefit of gain and fear of loss. What's in it for me or I'm going to miss out. And then you got to figure out which, what, what is that motivating factor for that individual. Yeah, I did. I mean, I did that yesterday. I had a guy that wanted me to come up three hours away. I was dreading it for days. I'm like, do I, do I want to really want to drive up there three hours away? And I was in my mind and, and I'm talking to Kate about it. And I'm like, how do I get out of going up there? I just don't see it being productive. 
you know, but you know what? 7.30 in the morning rolled around and I said, all right, I'm going because this could be the day, right? The one more. So we go up there, our first meeting. He puts the, the guy, the doctor and his wife on a thousand dollar subscription and he places us, we place a scanner. So what did I do? We had another call at three o'clock with a chiropractor who I think we're going to place another scanner. And so what did I do in that time between one o'clock and three o'clock? I talked to some, a lot of my team members and told them what just happened. Right. And, and that hopefully that's going to motivate some of them. Inspire them. Yeah, exactly. Inspire them. Yeah. So, all right. Great stuff. You guys, anybody else have any comments? Well, it looks like I think we've been through. Uh, I think we've been through a real nice transition on this call, through identifying a lot of the issues that we face, and then Vince in particular, and also you, Dan, have, have come up with really some of the answers. I love that when Vince said, "People love to chase, you know, chase success," and you were talking about, well, how do we keep people motivated? How do we keep them inspired? We don't. What we do is we coach them, just like you use that term coaching, and we coach them and we play a very active role by letting them know who's doing this, who's doing that. And, and like he says, that motivates people to chase the success. And then when they actually get something done successfully, the adrenaline shoots through their veins. You don't have to do anything at this point. They are jazzed. And uh, so it, it's not a simple process. And I think a lot of us, myself included, you know, we try to become supporters and I like a little bit of this hard love talk today, uh, but you do it in a manner that you are a coach and you're providing the right direction and, and the motivation comes from letting them know who's done something successful. And then, and people love being part of a team and they love being even more being part of a team that succeeds. And uh, so anyway, I think it's been a great call. So thank you guys very much. Yeah, and you know, we, look, we're all human on this call. We're all going to go through all of these, you know, positives and negatives. I mean, last week I, I went through a real, a real uh, come to G, well, not a come, oh, well, what come to Jesus moment. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I was like, look, I'm doing something wrong because I'm not building this business as quick as I want, you know? And so we talk it out. Lawrence and I talk every single day about what we can do different. What's working, what's not working, what we can do different. And honestly, the biggest thing that I think I can do on my team is hold my folks accountable. Right? So, you know, this call isn't just for you guys. This call is for us too, because we, we get on and we talk about what we're going to talk about on these calls. And sometimes it makes us think and introspect in our own business, what's working and what's not working. And so, we, you know, this helps us come up with ways that we can improve our business, improve our teams, improve our coaching, improve our leadership. So, you know, this isn't just for helping you guys. Honestly, I get probably get more out of it than anybody. So I want to thank everybody for being on these calls yeah. and being on here every single week because it, it, it helps me improve myself. Well, we learn by teaching. There's Joe, Dr. Scalia. Joe's on. He's got his hand up there, too. Oh, God. oh great. <laughs> uh, no, they're, 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 there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed the call and, uh, and all the input, and I liked what Jim said. And, you know, there's two ways to lead. One is by force and one is by influence. <laughs> I've tried the force thing a lot, and it doesn't work as well as influencing, like Vince was saying, you know, and sharing results that we've had and wanting to get that, 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 that pump there's nothing dan you know this, this is probably a conversation that we, we're probably ready to have now there's nothing like the thrill of the sale it's the ultimate adrenaline rush and if you're good at it whatever you're good at it you love to do and when you're not good at something you don't like to do it so let's find out number one what people are, you know what coaching style people want because you can be a coach to someone and have to be a different coach to someone else based on the style that they'll take number two have an upfront agreement. Lost you, Joe. Lost you. We lose everybody? No, I'm, I'm here. I think I, uh, yeah, I'm okay. here. And yeah, we lost Joe. Joe um, just got, he just froze up. Hopefully he'll come back. 
So, so one final thing that I want to impart on you guys is, you know, talking about that encounter I had with one of my folks yesterday. Can you, the, can you, can you hear me? Go ahead, yeah, Joe. Sorry about that. You got to look at what kind of coaching they'll want. And what I'm going to be doing in uh, another kind of coaching program I'm doing is I'm going to be asking people up front, what kind of coach do you want me to be zero to a hundred as far as how firm you want me to be? What do you want me to do if there's an expectation that you said you would do and you don't come through on it? That way you kind of hang them with their own words about the coaching that they want and not in a way to play gotcha or tricky because people have things that come up. You want to have a be understanding. You want to have that rigid flexibility. Thanks guys. I appreciate your, uh, the call and uh, I enjoyed listening. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks Joe. Thanks Joe. So what I was, so was going to say to finish up the call is I learned a very valuable lesson yesterday on that call where we, we put, you know, where we put that doc in a thousand dollar subscription and placed a scanner. At 12 o'clock, we, we, the meeting started at 11. He was a little bit late. At 12 o'clock, I had another call with, uh, with a bunch of pharmacies that have scanners. And so I went out to my car and make a call. I politely excused myself, said I'll be back shortly. About 20 minutes in, uh, Michelangelo comes down. He's, I see him at the side of my car, and he's like knocking on my window. He's like, you got to come in. They, they want a scanner, and they want you know this and that. And he's like, I haven't done this before. And I'm like, okay, I'll be right in. Uh, and I thought that deal was dead when I left to go out to make my other phone call, I was like, this isn't happening. There's no way in the world because he's like, our patients don't have the money to pay for these. You know, they don't have the, the interest level because they need to be educated. Now, if we educate them, then it's a different story. Right. And they only see like 25, 30 patients a week. So they have the opportunity to educate. Um, and so, you know, when he came out to my car, I was like, this guy's a bulldog. He just doesn't stop. You know, he just kept, giving it value and giving it validity and, and telling them why they needed to do this for their patients. And, and he, he got the sale, you know, it wasn't convincing, it was educating. And so, you know, like Dr. Scalia just said, you know, don't do it through force, do it through influence and you can influence by educating. Agreed. All right. Anybody? I know Lawrence and I have to jump on another call here. Thanks, right. everybody, for being on. If there's nothing else, thank you, guys. Great job, Lawrence. Great job, Dan. No, no, no. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Great call.